Hey nerds, welcome back to episode 11, I think, of Timeshot SMP. Man, I never seem to know what episode we're on. You'd think I'd have a better grip on that by now. Uh, we're back at spawn over here. I've just been looking around and doing some things. Uh, I just come over here and I realized that we never actually did anything with these graves. Like, I wanted to, but I couldn't think of an idea. So maybe I should start thinking about something to do with these again. Uh, if we can try and move them somewhere. I'm not sure. Also... <laughs> I just I remember now that Skypick Bob is still missing. I think we have to give him another sign. We have to give, we have to make another grave, and this one won't be murdered by me. It will be missing in action. M I A because he has not been seen for a few for a good few months now. And nobody knows where he is. So I'm not sure what to do about that, but we'll figure something out to do with it. Uh, there's been some development over on the Oink headquarters. Well, I should say there's been some development near the Oink headquarters, as you can see here. There is a giant construction site been set up around here. Now, they actually... This block of dirt is going to annoy me in a second. Oh, wait. It's supposed to be there? Why would you put that there? That's a, I'll leave it there for now, then, I guess. Uh, they use TNT to excavate this hole. Um, as you can see here, something... Something must have gone terribly wrong here. I don't know... If they just didn't notice it, they didn't hear the glass smashing or something, but no words have been, nothing's been said about, you know, the giant holes in here. I'm sure if we head inside, everyone's going to be getting really drafty in there. What did that sign say? Oh yeah, office spaces. Release within. So, I'm not sure what our next course of action will be for this, but at the moment, this is not a very safe working environment. And I mean, glass is not cheap. Especially stained glass like this. So, I don't know what our next step will be, but I think we're going to have to have words with, uh... Well, I don't even know who the owner of this place is now. Is it Jake? Is it Huck? Is it Poet? <laughs> I don't even know. But we might have to leave a book somewhere. Let them know that we are not happy with the... What has happened to our building there? Uh, I'm going to quickly... Wait, that's a pig with a saddle. Could it be Sky Pig Bob? Have you been trapped here this whole time? No, it's not. Uh, I'm going to head over to that snow biome that we found last episode, and I will be back when we get there. Okay, we've made it to our little area here. You can see I've set up a nether portal. Um, that quickly melted away, like, all the snow around it. So, I am not. I don't know how this is, like, here. It should be melting away. Uh, but I'm glad that it's snowing now, because it gives, like, because a lot of these places here, there's where there used to be trees that I've cut down, they don't have any snow around them, and I kind of want them to have some snow. I like that it's a snowy biome, so I'm glad that it's having a chance to patch up the, the holes. Uh, let's eat some snacks. Now, I designed my house. I know what it's going to look like, and I also know that it's quite big. Uh, and it's not that cheap, uh, resource-wise. Oh, I, just fin I haven't finished explaining the changes I've made around here. Uh, if we go over here, you can see that I've started pushing the forest out a bit. Let's kill this little guy nice uh, you'll see that I can I've started pushing the forest out this way uh, I want to kind of bring it here as well and eventually hopefully cover this whole kind of area I think that'd be nice we can do some more now I've got two on me stick one there and one there for now I'm being chased by a spider oh I'm not being chased I thought I was so my plan for this episode is to at least get the framework of the house down uh, I don't know. I don't even know where I'm going to build it at the moment because you can see that there's not. It's like a. It's a big house. Like, I probably should have designed it in this world first instead of designing it on a super flat world. Because I don't know where I'm going to stick it. I was thinking of because I want it to be surrounded by the forest. That's the whole point of this. So I was thinking of building it here where there's a lot of open space and then building the forest around it. So instead of going into the forest, we bring the forest to us. Uh, I'm going to scout around this area quite a little bit. There was another area somewhere just over here near the. Like the little lake that we've got going over here. There was like an area. There's two witches there. There's an area just over here that's like quite flat. But I'd have to destroy a lot of trees. And maybe alter the terrain quite a bit to fit it in. Um, which is not something I really want to be doing. I want to kind of keep this place as natural as possible. Which is why every time I destroy a tree. I plant another one exactly in the same place kind of thing. Just to kind of keep it. I don't know. I don't even know why I do that. But whatever. Uh, so this is kind of where I was thinking of building it, but I'm still not sure. I guess well, this quite area is quite here. It's quite flat. Okay, we might build it here. I'm going to do a little more scouting around, see what we feel. Okay, so I have laid out the area here. 
It's not as big as I thought it was going to be. I'm, I think it's because the, the finished building is like three stories tall, so it looks absolutely massive. So that must be why I kind of thought the floor, the, the, the footprint of the building would be bigger. Um, as you can see, I, I did fit it in where I thought I was going to near this area here. And I like this area. It's nice because you've got like the river just over here. Uh, plus, I've got my nether portal already set up here. I will show you there's, there's another location that I just got to quickly clean up. Oops. Over here somewhere. Here. This is another place that I was thinking of building. Uh, I was going to build up the forest around it, obviously. But I didn't like that it was... Like, it was sunken down one block than everything else, and I just didn't like the area, so I didn't build here. Um, I'll just quickly clean this up, and then we'll get to work on the other bit, building up the uh, the frame of the building. So, let's start work on this house. Now, I wanted to kind of make it so it was like an actual, real building. Uh, not real, but like a functional building type of thing. So I, I want to build it. I want to build it. I want to build it how they would build like a real log cabin type of thing. Um, and that's what they usually do is they usually either have like a stone base at the bottom or they put it up on stilts. And I decided to go for the stilts approach. Uh, so what I need to do is quickly just run around and place a block on every single one of these. Now I'm going to be doing this in a different way. Like I, I don't really usually show myself building like I am right now. I usually skip it and then I'll come I'll cut back once I've done it. So this is gonna take it might take a few episodes to build actually if I'm doing it this way. I'll do at least one episode this way anyway. I'll do this episode this way and then if it's too boring or whatever, you guys let me know and I will go right back to how I usually do it. Um there we go. And the reason they put them on stilts by the way is so like because obviously the ground is wet. If you put a log cabin straight on that ground it's gonna rot. Um now oh yeah here it is. Now, in order to add some extra support to this, I'm going to run around and put a bit of cobblestone footing around. Also, like the way I built this house, it's unusual to how I usually build them. I built the floor plan first. I saw something on the, the subreddit ages ago on how to build a house or whatever it was. Well, not ages ago, but... Hmm, that... Is that... That doesn't go there. I guess it could, actually. It's not going to do us any harm. Just to have extra support underneath the house. I saw like the way that he, this guy designed it was he built the floor first, the floor plan like I have here first, and then designed the house upwards of that. Usually I start with like I do it like one wall at a time, and that's just a stupid way of doing it because it, you need to you need to have an idea of how like the whole house is, the shape of the house is going to be before you start building walls and stuff. So I did, I did a very modular approach to this, as you'll see that I'm going to be building it today. Like, I build the the foundation first, and then I'll build the frame of the house out of the logs, and then I'll fill in the walls afterwards. Uh, and that's... It, it, I felt like that really worked for me. Uh, now I need to get some... I'm not sure I have enough of this. I've only got, like, a little bit of dark oak. I might need to go get some more. Because we need stairs, and we need... There you go, 32 stairs. That's not going to be enough. So basically what we've got to do now is, in every single one of these gaps, we've got to do this. Oops. Let's not place them wrong. And then, like that. It's going to be a real pain building this without creative mode. See, this is the kind of thing that I think would be pretty boring, is just watching me do the, the same motion over and over again. And like, I guess most people would talk about something other than the build. But I'm not an interesting person, apparently, and I have nothing else to talk about. So I'm not sure what I'm going to say while I build it. That poet would probably have some really interesting story about something that happened. He'd have a rant about some kind of about his internet provider or something like that. How they've, oops, how they've done something wrong for him. Stick that there. What could I talk about? I'm, I guess I could talk about what I'm doing in uni at the moment. I am finally in my final year. That's quite important. A bit scary. Uh, I've been in uni for four years on a three-year course because uh, I, I transferred unis halfway through. My f well, I transferred uni after ten days of being at... Actually, we don't need to do that quite like that because no one's going to see the stairs. You might as well save them and just do something like that instead for all these like ones you're not going to see. 
I guess for you guys, it's it's be weird because you don't know what the actual final thing's gonna look like. Yeah, we're out of wood already. Um, okay, well, tell you what, I will go harvest some more of the dark oak, and then I will carry on with my story of my university. Might actually have something interesting to talk about. All right, see you then. Okay, so where was I? I am in my final year of university, and this is a big year. I don't know if like Americans. You've got you know what university is. I mean, I guess college is more common over in America, isn't it? Like you go to your college, but yeah, it's a really big deal, and I'm really terrified because I've got to submit a dissertation now. Dissertation is like, a, I guess, a thesis. I guess I think if you know what that is, I don't, I don't know what Americans know about British schooling or what or what similarities there are between the two of them, but the dissertation is like it's the big thing. It's the final piece of work you will submit. Uh, in your education, unless you go on to do like a master's degree or a, a PhD or something like that, or a doctorate, but yeah, the dissertation is the big thing, and I've got well, today is Friday. I've got until next Friday to choose what what topic I want to do my dissertation on. So you didn't know what degree I'm doing as well. I'm doing a video games design degree, video games. What's it? Video game programming or something like that. I think my, the exact title is. I don't know, but so my dissertation is going to be related to that. I've got to decide what kind of game I want to make or well they've done it differently normally with a dissertation you decide what topic you want it to be on and it has to be something unique that's that's very important that kind of has to be something that nobody else has done or it has to be like if you're in science or something it could be using someone else's dissertation data to in further enhance your dissertation or something like that but it has to be something that you can't copy like no one else can kind of do as well that's very important in a dissertation. Is that the whole floor done? All right, sweet. Uh, now we've got to build up the walls. So my university's done it a bit different. They've given us topics, uh, and that's because while it has to be unique, like a lot of the computer science things, they always end up being something quite similar. Like it's a, a database system for some kind of holiday thing. I think they had like three of those last year or something like that. So it can get quite an not annoying for them to mark because actually this I just realized doesn't happen like that there you go right, how do I get up there with this so in order to like stop that from happening stop having like most of them being similar uh, dissertations they've given us topics this year given us a list of them and we have to choose which one and then I want to pick these up before they despawn because these are my only ways of getting dark oak leaves uh, and then so what happens then is I will put down like my top three choices like I will I want to do this one this one and this one and then uh, the tutors behind them so each topic has a tutor uh, a dissertation tutor applied not applied assigned to it and then that guy will then say if he wants me or not he has to look at me look at my previous work and go okay you seem like you could do this you seem like you have the right kind of head on you I'm choosing you to do my dissertation topic uh, and that's what makes me most nervous is that I don't have the final say whether in the topic I kind of choose. Like I get to choose three. I choose my my priority and then two other ones. But there's no guarantee that I'll get. I guess there's no guarantee that I'll get any any of them really. And I might have to choose another fourth one if none of them want me. I've got a pretty good track record at the moment. I've not done too shabby in uni. Uh, my work's been good. It's just like. So I've been getting like in university the grades work like there's a third. Do zombies not burn in the day? Baby zombies. There's a third, uh, two two, a two one, a first, and that's it. I think there's a, maybe a first with honours or something like that, or maybe first is with honours anyway. I don't know. But basically, I've been getting firsts in quite a few assignments. Uh, I've been on like a two one, a first in quite a few assignments, but I've been submitting them late, unfortunately, which means that I've been getting like. If you follow my Twitter, you'll see a lot of the time, like, I'm tweeting at, like, four in the morning saying, don't leave your assignments till last minute. Uh, and a lot of the times, I don't actually end up submitting them on time, which is unfortunate. Um, that means I get a late penalty. So for every day I submit late, I get 10 marks knocked off. And that is... So the grade boundaries are a 3 is a 40 and above. <coughs> Sorry, I just coughed. A 3 is a 40 and above. Or a 40, yeah, a 40, uh, 40 to 50 is a 3. Anything lower than a 40 and you fail. Um, so a third is 
40 to 50, a 2-2 two -two is 50 to 60, uh, a 2-1 is 60 to 70, and a 70, uh, a first is 70 and above. And that's what I've been getting is like 70s, high 60s kind of thing. But I submit him late, which means I get 10 marks taken off, which then instantly lowers me down from a first to a 2-1, from a 2-1 to a 2 kind of thing. Uh, and that's really been dragging me down. Luckily, I managed to kind of scrape. I, I I got half like I got 65 overall for the year last year, which is uh, a two 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 one even. Sorry, so I'm not doing too shabby at the moment. I'm scraping by. <laughs> uh, uh, man, I really can't talk and do it at the same time. So the next step, I'm gonna run out of logs here before we have a chance to finish this. But that'll be alright because this episode is gonna get long anyway. So I need to end it at some point. We're just gonna close off the gaps like this now there's some kind of commotion going on downstairs i'm not sure what's happening but there's a lot of shouting going on <laughs> probably my dog's doing something so yeah the the topics i'm looking at the moment are um uh creating a um sorry i the shouting out things so the topics i get to choose from the topics i'm looking at anyway are um Okay, so back to where we were before the fiasco happened just then. Um, what was I saying? So my dissertation topic choices, the ones I'm looking at, are uh, procedurally generated game design. So build a game with uh, procedurally generated content. Uh, I need to have a meeting to discuss what you mean by like. I know what procedurally generated means, but I don't know if he wants like the terrain to be procedurally generated or the actual game content, like the guns and the the people. So I'm not sure. That's my main one, I think. I think that's the one I'm most interested in. Uh, the other one is kind of vague. It's just uh, make a game, make a multiplayer game kind of thing. Uh, I think I might make a... I think one of the options was like a real-time strategy game. So I think I might go for that. That sounds pretty fun as well. Uh, and the third one, uh, this is here just because it sounds interesting. It's um, virtual reality with... Um, so make a game using virtual reality that plays on the theme of light and dark. So I'm not going to discuss any ideas just in case any of my classmates are here and they want to try and steal my ideas. Not that they do that, but you, you can never be too sure. Um, so these are the kind of the ideas I've been playing around with, the, the, the options I've been playing around with. Well, that went fast, we finished. So here we are in the finished framework of the house. Just imagine like um, a little bit extra going up there and then like a roof closing it off. I'm not sure why I didn't build the roof now. I probably could have. Uh, but this is the way I designed it, so I guess I'm just kind of sticking to what I know. Um, we need to do a, a little bit of terraforming. Like I don't like this pit just being here, so I'm going to fill this in probably. Clear out this sand as well. Uh, quite a lot of creepers have been exploding at me during at night. Like a, an absolutely ton of creepers. So there's quite a lot of patches that haven't got grass in that we need to fill up. I might make some snowmen and just let them wander about and they can fill in the gaps. Um, but basically this is going to be the entrance here. There's going to be like a deck here and then the doors go in here. Uh, and then this area here will all be the floor, and then if we go around, I just gotta hop around to the back. Uh, this upper bit here will be a deck, like a, a pat uh, what's it, a balcony. And then if I come around here, we'll have like another little a deck area out here. I just do that reminds me. I need to. This doesn't need to be here. This is supposed to be just fl solid decking. Uh, so that's how that. Oh, and these two. There we go. So we can close that up again. Um, and then that's going to be like a slanted roof. Let's go around to the other side. This bit above me here will be a slanted roof. Uh, there'll be a second story here. This window here is going to be all glass, like a nice glass window to go there. Uh, these will be glass windows too. And yeah, I think that's generally it kind of thing. Um, mm, yeah, I don't, there's not much else to say. I guess I'll see you in the next episode when we'll start putting it together.